Okay, so we are in the process of calculating the variance of the Poisson distribution, and uh, we have employed the Lotus, and we are trying to find e of x squared, and we get that it's equal to the sum from 0 to infinity of x squared, e to the negative lambda, lambda to the x over x factorial. Okay, so we're going to have to apply some uh, a bit more clever analysis here. So let's start with something that we know, which is that x is equal to 0 to infinity, the sum from x is equal to 0 to infinity, of lambda to the x over x factorial. We know that that is equal to e to the lambda. Now, what about differentiating with respect to lambda? Now, what's the motivation for that? We want this x squared over here. If we differentiate with respect to lambda, it pulls an x down uh, into the front, doesn't it? Uh, uh, using some technical um, technicalities here uh, that we can interchange the summation and the differentiation. Okay, so let's try doing that. If we differentiate this side, we get lambda e uh, to... Oh, sorry, no, sorry, e to the lambda. Uh, if we just differentiate this side uh, with respect to lambda, we just get e to the lambda. If we differentiate this side, we get d d lambda of this summation x is equal to 0 uh, to infinity of lambda to the x over x factorial. Now, uh, the function e to the lambda uh, is equal to its power series. This power series converges to e to the lambda everywhere in the complex plane. It is what is known as an, an entire function. It is it, it, or it's holomorphic everywhere, analytic everywhere, these big words. Uh, basically, all they mean is that uh, it's uh, this, uh, well, uh, they, it means that this power series converges everywhere in the complex plane. Now, uh, it's a long, long proof, and I'm not going to include it here, uh, that uh, if you have a power series which converges on a radius of convergence, i.e. if a power series converges on... Um, on a ball like that. So if you have some ball in the complex plane and the power series converges on that ball, uh, on that uh, disk rather, uh, then the if you want the derivative of the function, so the derivative of e to the lambda say, uh, then uh, it's true that you can differentiate term by term, i.e. that you can interchange the order of the summation and the differentiation. So we can say that this is the sum of the de uh, from x is equal to 0 to infinity of the derivative of lambda to the x over x factorial uh, with respect to lambda. Uh, and uh, this series will converge on on this same disk and it will actually converge to the derivative of the function. Uh, that's a theorem in complex analysis and it's not trivial to show. Uh, okay, uh, so it is equal, uh, so now basically that we have, um, that I've talked my way out of having to do that, uh, that we, we have that the that e to the lambda, which is the derivative of e to the lambda with respect to lambda, is equal to the uh, summation uh, from x is equal to 0 to infinity. Oh, and I didn't, I forgot the punchline here. Uh, the punchline is that e to the lambda, this power series converges everywhere on the complex plane. So in fact, this, uh, you can do this, you can interchange the order of differentiation, and this new series, which is the sum of the derivative, is going to converge to the derivative everywhere on the complex plane, basically. Okay, uh, so uh, the derivative of this with respect to lambda is x lambda to the x minus 1 over uh, x factorial. Okay, so remember lambda is now our variable, so it's lambda to the power of something, which, and if we want to differentiate that, we just lower the power and uh, by 1 and multiply through by the old power. So x lambda to the x minus 1 uh, x factorial. Okay. So now what we can do is we could multiply both sides by lambda e, so we get lambda e to the lambda is equal to the summation x is equal to 0 to infinity of x lambda uh, to the um, x again over x factorial. Okay, uh, so uh, that uh, that's slightly untrue there uh, because, oh actually no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's completely true, sorry. Uh, that's... Uh, that is a completely valid manoeuvre. All I've done is multiply both sides by lambda. And the reason I've done it is to raise this power back up to x, uh, so that when I differentiate for a second time, I again will get another x here. Okay. Uh, so if we continue this process, and again, uh, this power series will converge to that on the entire complex plane, um, and um, therefore when we differentiate this side, with respect to lambda, lambda e to the lambda, uh, then it is equal to the sum from x is equal to 0 to infinity 
of the derivative with respect to lambda uh, x lambda to the x over x factorial. And if you're interested in that, um, I uh, would refer you to a course on complex analysis or a textbook on complex analysis. Okay, so um, the derivative of this side is going to be just by the product rule. Uh, it's equal to lambda e to the lambda. So I've left this one alone and differentiated e to the lambda. And then I'm going to differentiate this one, which is 1, and then leave the other one alone. So I've got lambda e to the lambda plus e to the lambda. So I can factor out e to the lambda and get lambda plus 1 e to the lambda. And on this other side, I will get the summation from x is equal to 0 to infinity of differentiate this with respect to lambda, and you get x squared lambda to the x minus 1 over x factorial. Okay, so what was the original series we want? Uh, see, uh, original series we wanted. The original series we wanted is all the way back up here. This is the series we wanted. This is the series we've got to so far. So. But in my opinion, all we need to do is multiply both sides by lambda e to the negative lambda. So if I multiply both sides by lambda e to the negative lambda, I get, on this side, I get lambda e to the negative lambda times uh, lambda plus 1 e to the lambda. And on this side, I get the summation from x is equal to 0 to infinity of x squared e to the negative lambda, lambda to the x over x factorial which is excellent because that's exactly the sequence that I want, uh, the series that I wanted uh, up here. So this is equal, we note, to e, of, to e of x squared. So now we've got everything we want, so I can move this right up. And on this side, the e to the negative lambda cancels with the e to the lambda, and I get lambda, lambda plus 1, at uh, times lambda plus 1, is equal to e of x squared. Okay, so now... I note that the variance of x, uh, where x was Poissonly distributed lambda, so I'll just remind you of that, x was Poissonly distributed lambda, is equal to e of x squared minus e of x squared. Now, e of x is equal to lambda, so I get lambda times lambda plus 1 minus lambda squared, and this, if you expand it, is just equal to lambda squared plus lambda, so overall, this is going to be equal to lambda. So the variance of a of a random variable which is distributed Poisson with uh, Poisson parameter lambda is actually equal to that Poisson parameter lambda. So the variance of x is equal to lambda if x is Poissonly distributed lambda.